little deeper is attorney Jared Lodeholtz. He's a partner in Ice Miller's Public Affairs Group. All right, let's get into it because we all agree robocalls are pretty much the worst. We're familiar with those spam or junk calls. So how do these AI calls, though, enter uncharted territory? Because it really sounds real. <laughs> They do. And I mean, I mean, the, the fact that we're in an election year where I thought when you all played the video, it was Joe Biden. And I do this Same. every day for a living. Any person could fall prey to this, including me. And I've done campaigns for decades. Um, and this is a dangerous tool. And so uh, we are in uncharted territory. But I think the good news was the existing law was sufficient to be expanded to cover this issue. And I think this New Hampshire robocall of the president was enough, but this has been going on for some time. And so I'm glad that the FCC responded this time because this is this is an existential threat, I think, to our democracy when we can't distinguish the voices of something that's AI generated and the people we elect. A hundred percent. I mean, the FCC ruling, it takes effect immediately. The question though is how can they determine something is AI generated? And my fear is that um, the people who do these things, right, they get so sophisticated that maybe they can be undetectable. Yes. That is my question as well. And I think that is, that, is, that is where I hope the combination of state attorneys generals and the FCC in collaboration can crack down on these calls. But to your point, how do they know? And what if a human introduces the call and then an AI generated voice comes after it? Uh, right. Does that qualify? Right. So I could see a lawyer being crafty and coming up with a workaround or at least what they think is a workaround. But that is a good point. Right. Which means hopefully Congress is funding um, these regulators at a level where they can acquire the technology, I think, necessary to distinguish between a human voice and an AI generated voice, because I could not distinguish them. And I think to the average untrained ear, we could not either. And so, but there is technology that does allow for that to happen. And hopefully the regulators have the resources, both state and federal to acquire those. So what legal action though can like me at home and any other American take if they fall victim to these deceptive calls? Well, one I think is to file a complaint with either the FCC or your state attorney general. Every state, including, including the District of Columbia has a, an attorney general's office who will be looking out for these, who will receive these. You can find them online, you can call, you can email. I have found personally that if you tag them on Facebook or Twitter, their offices, they can, they'll respond quicker or you can DM them. <laughs> if you get a call, record it. I think many of us have devices where we can record something in real time and then be able to send it. I think the challenge candidly is gonna be seniors. I'm most concerned with people who are perhaps less technologically savvy, right. who A, will not only become victim to the robocalls, but who may not know who to call or how to record what has happened such that they can share the, the information that they believe violates the law. So while I do think this is a great first step, the resources around enforcement, I think making sure that our regulators have the appropriate technology, and I think paying special attention to vulnerable populations like our seniors, I think really is important because they're going to be the ones, unfortunately, who I think are going to be targeted in many yeah. cases. And when we talk about political robocalls calls in particular, the people who have landlines tend to, tend to skew older. And that tends to be where many of your robocalls calls for political campaigns target. And 100%. so I think this is a space where we should be very concerned where the law is in the right place, but now we have to ensure that the enforcement and the resources are in the right place. Certainly so. A good first step. Partner in Ice Miller's Public Affairs Group, Jared Lodeholt. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me.